To help move forward towards the goal of jumpstarting the electric aviation industry, NASA hosted the NASA Battery Workshop. Over the years, the workshop has included industry representatives, academia, and folks from government labs. Every facet of the battery industry was represented. At the 2017 workshop, it was determined that the lack of a battery that was specifically designed for aerospace use was the primary thing that was holding the industry back from launching electric air vehicles. This was due to the fact that the current lithium-ion batteries were never designed to meet the energy density and performance requirements for aerospace, considering that the performance metrics for vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or EV tolls, are at least two times greater than those of electric automobiles. And up to the time of the 2017 workshop, it seemed that many researchers had been just trying to take the existing lithium-ion battery technology and find a way to make it work for aerospace by doing complex engineering to manipulate the craft itself to make the battery fit. But the Sabres team realized they wanted to do the opposite. It was their aha moment. They wanted to think differently and tailor the battery to aerospace applications. Currently, Tesla vehicles are using a state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery pack that rates at around 180 to 200 watt-hours per kilogram. The target for the automotive industry, which is working together with the U.S. Department of Energy, is to produce a battery pack with 250 to 300 watt-hours per kilogram. This battery pack capacity would be considered good enough to eliminate the barrier to entry for the development of the next generation of electric cars. The industry would then likely move forward to end R&D in automotive battery development at that time. But the goal for UAM is to have a battery pack engineered specifically for aerospace use with an energy rating of at least 400 watt-hours per kilogram, which would enable longer flights. Sabres is designed to do better, with the goal of truly enabling urban air mobility by designing a better and safer battery pack specifically designed for aviation. Sabres goal, working with CAS, which follows a high-risk, high-reward proposal model, is to exceed that 325 watt-hour per kilogram value and achieve 500 watt-hours per kilogram, which would help lead to a groundbreaking expansion of the electric aircraft market by expanding electric flights to a regional market while also making flying safer. Preliminary systems level analysis has indicated that there are five key properties which must be optimized for successful implementation of battery systems that will work for aviation. Those five key criteria are safety, energy density, power, packaging design, and scalability. As a comparison, current lithium-ion batteries meet or exceed the requirements for electric aviation in the areas of power and scalability, yet are insufficient in the key performance criteria of energy, safety, and packaging design. The Sabres concept proposes a battery that meets all five key performance criteria through the development of a solid-state architecture battery utilizing high energy density and power density sulfur selenium cathode with a lithium metal anode. Based upon the battery workshop, it became clear that a solid-state battery utilizing a lithium sulfur chemistry would be the only system at the time to be able to achieve the 500 watt-hour per kilogram goal that would truly enable electric aircraft. First, Sabres created a more safe battery by using a solid-state electrolyte that would be non-flammable, thus nearly erasing the potential of a battery fire as a replacement to the highly flammable liquid organic electrolytes currently used. To improve battery power, the Sabres team promoted the use of high energy density by utilizing the current research going into lithium sulfur. In addition to the sulfur, they added a new technology called selenium. It hybridizes directly and easily, and research has shown extremely high charge and discharge rates. Sabres also implemented the use of a NASA-born technology called holy graphene. Holy graphene is a layered structure, which has the highest electrical conductivity in plane of any material known. It is also very light. It is heated to form holes, and those holes allow through thickness ion transport. The graphene itself can be pressed without the use of any solvents. 
made into any shape, and be made into a battery within minutes. You simply place the cathode in, stamp it, produce the battery, and it will be ready to use. The combination of sulfur and selenium offers a balanced energy to power density ratio, which can be tailored to the specific application by altering the stoichiometric ratios of sulfur to selenium. The battery pack itself can be made to fit the purpose, becoming larger or smaller as the need requires. Theoretically, the maximum energy density could be as high as 2,567 watt-hours per kilogram, five times the current goal. In addition, the materials being used to build the battery are already in existence. As an example, sulfur is readily available. It's a waste byproduct of the oil refining industry. There are mountains of sulfur stored in oil-producing countries around the globe, including our own, basically sitting as a waste product. Holy graphene is patented by NASA and therefore accessible, and there are already companies looking to license the technology so they can make it in mass. And at the end of the battery's life cycle, a great many of the elements can be reused, thus reducing a great deal of mass from industrial landfills as compared to current battery technologies. The highly optimized serial stacking configuration is termed a bipolar stack, which has the advantages of reducing overall cell weight, reducing the amount of interface connections for the cell, and minimizing the cooling requirements for the cell, which is already inherently non-flammable. Lastly, optimization of the battery components will occur through a robust and rigorous combination of various computational modeling techniques covering multiple length scales. The expected result will be a fully solid state battery with operational temperatures from 0 to 150 degrees Celsius, which provides the required energy density, discharge rates, and inherent safety to meet the strict aerospace performance criteria.